You know what? Everything is changing, isn't it? You can just feel it. Everything is changing. And uh, Elisa said, wow, oh, man, it's hot. And there's this, this heat dome. And I said, hey, the atmospheres are changing. And there is this heat dome, they are saying, that is... We've had the highest temperatures in a decade. I went out in my car yesterday. We were up just a little bit uh, uh, east of Florence, and it said 115. I didn't even know my car thing would go up to 115. And, and so the things are changing. Culture, obviously, is, is changing, and atmospheres are changing, and unheard of that a hurricane named Hurricane Hillary is headed toward L.A. So what, what happens when you got that kind of heat or and, and other parts there having uh, flooding and, and tornadoes and, and hurricanes and, and all kinds of stuff, there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of fear, you know, like, okay, even with the weather, what, what is uh, next? And then it just, then you just get kind of angry, you, you know, and, and all of that stuff. And, but for us, for us today, tell your neighbor, it's your opportunity. It's your opportunity. In other words, knowing that the changes are taking place, they have taken place, it sets us up to go beyond the systems that are presently working in the earth right now. And they've been used in the past to maneuver us through crazy times. But God is calling people like Barbara or John or others in this room. And remember, any time that somebody gets a prophetic word, if you want it, you can have it. It's just like in the Bible, John 3, 16 is not just for me and all my Baptist friends. It's for anybody who would believe. So those kind of, I bet we've got some bone rattlers in this room. If that's you, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and say, I'm going to rattle some bones. We're in crazy times. The bones need to be rattled. Sit down. God is causing us to step out into stuff we're not familiar with. So why? The reason why is because there is a shaking coming. Yeah. The enemy knows what to do with the people just go to church and they act like God is no big deal. You know, God is no big deal. He is the only deal. The devil doesn't know what to do with the people where God is the only deal in their life. And they're changed daily into the image of Christ. And they stay far above all of the change, all of the stuff that's going on in the earth right now. We are living in critical, important times. And there seems like there's all these three-letter organizations. We've got the CIA and the FBI and the WHO and the NSA and the DOD and the DOJ and the WEF. But let me tell you something. We've got the G-O-D. Just say it. And G-O-D has an agenda, all right, and that agenda includes you and I and our faith. So the challenge during the shaking is to stay in faith no matter what. Just lift your hands and say, challenge accepted. 
Now, I just want you to know that there's a video camera right up there in the corner, and heaven just videoed you saying, challenge accepted. So when you, do, when you get in a situation, you think, oh, gosh, I, I don't know, I don't know. Now, just know the video from heaven has videoed you, and he's going to play it back to you when you pull back. No matter what it is that you're called to do, heaven captured, challenge accepted right just a few minutes ago. So a young couple in my family, I put this in the newsletter. Actually, it's my niece and her husband. They purchased over 100 acres a couple of years ago of, of land and out on the river, out by Udall, where all of my family are from. And, and uh, they decided that they would build a cement home. I mean, they, this, this land is gorgeous, beautiful land. And, so, and it's surrounded by all these trees. So in order not to have termites, they decided that they would build a cement home home and and they wanted to do all, all the work themselves and they had all the equipment and and they were just amazing so they spent the whole last year clearing the land and and getting the ground ready for their forever a uh, home and and we were just so in awe of what everything that they had done and so I think it was three or four months ago they they poured the floor and they, it was amazing what they had to do to get that ready. They poured the floor, and then they began to, to put up the forms for the cement walls. Nothing else was going to be cement, but the, but the walls and the floor were. And, and the walls were going to be 12 inches thick. So, trust me. A tornado would have a little bit of a struggle knocking this whole thing down, although they were going to have a, uh, a, a safe room in there. But so they, and they did it pretty much themselves. Uh, and uh, so they put up the wall forms, they did all that stuff. And um, so a week, no, it's been two weeks now uh, ago, I got a phone call from uh, them, and the whole thing had been blown away. The whole thing. I guess, Stephanie, you don't have that picture, do you? But uh, that, that's all right. Uh, it, and actually, it's in the, it's in the newsletter. And uh, all, the form, all, all that months of work. And it was a straight wind. It wasn't a tornado. And in fact, there was a pile of two-befores maybe 10 yards away. Didn't even move them. Knocked the whole house down. And they were just, in fact, I said, well, Andy, how far, how, how far away are, is it that they're going to pour the walls? Well, she said, well, we're hoping that we could pour uh, around our anniversary, which, was, uh, which is sep uh, September the 6th. So I stood in front. And, and my family, we're just all for one and one for all, and we're all in it, and whatever is going on, uh, yeah, whatever is going on. And that, that right there is just the front part, because it's a big house, and then Josh, bless his house, he's got a humongous, you would love it, John, um, shop. And it's, it's, it's over this way from the, all of it, gone. And thank you, Steph. And uh, so I stood right there in front of that. My dad is there, we're all there, we're looking at this. And I hear, gone with the wind. And I, I mean, I, I didn't say it. To, I just heard it, gone with the, I mean, it's obvious, gone with the wind. But I, I thought to myself, what does the old movie, Gone with the Wind, have to do with, with this, gone, gone with the wind. 
I did just a little research. I, I never seen the movie. I really didn't know anything about the movie except the setting was the Civil War and uh, the dynamics of people in the movie. But the movie got its name from this, uh, from a poem. Check it out. I've lost the memory of a painful past. It's gone with the wind. Let's just lift our hands and say that because you know what? People that got PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, because they can't get over their past. And I don't mean that in some kind of derogatory way or I'm so great I don't have a past, but I'm saying it needs to be gone with the wind. That is a poem that this movie, they took their the name of it from the poem, I've lost the memory of a painful past. Let's say that. I've lost the memory of a painful past. It's gone with the wind. Let's say it again. I've lost the memory of a painful past. It's gone with the wind. Now, let me tell you something else. Gone with the wind symbolizes it's the wind is a powerful force that destroys an existing order. Listen, I want to tell you, there's some orders that are coming down. And they are coming down with the wind that is going to come out of the ecclesia's mouth. That's what gone with the wind symbolizes. Now, yes, their home was gone, gone with the wind. But my family will be all right. Praise the Lord for insurance. Praise the Lord. They're only 40 years old. Oh. Yeah. And, and, and their desire will take them forward. But the operative word in gone with the wind is wind. So that experience took me on a journey. And it's, it's only been uh, a, a few days. But it took me on a journey where I realized that the advantage that God is giving us is placed in the fabric of creation called the four winds. Now, specifically in the book of Mark, check it out. Jesus spoke to the wind. Jesus said, whatever he did, we could do and greater things. So I just began, you know, I pulled out my Strong's Concordance. So what about this? So I just looked up a couple of things. These are things that I put in the newsletter, and we'll go into a little more detail here. But the north wind, out of Proverbs 25, the north wind brings forth rain. Now, now you know that I am the queen of the weather. And I have written weather decrees for years, and Jay Swallow would, would teach us about the weather and the jet streams and this coming up and that coming down and El Nino and all that kind of stuff we learned from our Native American friends. And so I've written all of these weather decrees and, and all of that. And then it says in Proverbs, and we're in a drought, and it says that the north wind brings rain. So in a little bit, we're going to have an interactive workshop where we speak to the rain the same way, or the north wind the same way that Jesus did in that boat. That was an adverse wind that came to take away their destiny. Jesus said, we're going over to the other side, and a wind came. Aren't you ready to speak against the adverse winds that are in the earth right now? And the east wind. When Moses stretched out his hand over the, and remember that it says the east wind came and it held back all that water uh, by a strong east wind, it says. And, and obviously they walked uh, over that. And then when Pharaoh and all the chair and all the stuff, he did the same thing. And that wind then, so it had a dual purpose. It helped the, 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 uh, 
people of God get over and then it also crashed in on the enemy. Then the south wind. Do you realize that Kansas was named after the Kansas tribe or the Kaw tribe and it is people of the south wind. In Psalm 78 it says by his power the south wind released the power of God, the supernatural provision of God, the finances, and everything that is needed. People of the south wind. This is why Kansas is being highlighted right now. Because we are people of the south wind. And we're going to speak to the wind, the south wind, in just a little bit. And we're going to call forth the supernatural provision, whatever that that might be for what is needed during the shaking. And then the west wind, Exodus 10, and the Lord turned a west wind, which lifted the locust. Remember, the locust came. The locust came with an east wind because the east wind is like a, a matter of uh, destruction. West is a matter of deliverance. So when you need deliverance, you speak to the west wind. And the west wind came and all of those locusts that were all over everything, the Bible said the west wind drove them into the Red Sea. We're going we're gonna to be able to operate gone with the wind. So gone with the wind, gone is the drought, gone are our enemies, gone is poverty and lack, gone is the devourer. And, and, and I'm not trying to have some new doctrine, I'm certainly not going to write a book called Gone with the Wind, but we're learning to operate and exercise our kingdom rights to gain divine access in this new place that we're going to find because everything that can be shaken will be shaken. We're going to find ourselves in that place. So the Holy Spirit is releasing things that have been in the darkness. And he's bringing us to a place of divine access. Say, gone with the wind. And what that's going to do, it's going to prepare us to overcome whatever we face. So wind. The four winds. The four winds are mentioned, I think, like nine times in the scripture. And the winds that I am talking about are winds that God uses through us because he gave us dominion in Genesis. So it's all about us moving. There is supernatural intervention that is needed right now. Now, I'm not talking about we're going to pray away the shaking. That's not what. In the middle of the shaking, we're going to experience and call forth by the wind, the wind that comes out of our mouth, supernatural intervention in the middle of all of the shakings. We're going to engage spiritual forces called wind that are going to fight with the angels, the four corner angels. And in Revelation chapter 7, it says that the four corner angels hold the north, the south, the east, and the west winds. So now let me get to John. So the rest of you can have this word if you want, but I'm speaking particularly to John. Then he said to me in Ezekiel chapter 37, Speak, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, Come from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. You and I are going to be doing that. They may in fact be dead. This was dead dry bones in a valley. So the Lord says, breathe, blow. When you have John discernment and application of these things, you're going to be, I'm speaking to John, but anybody can have it. I'm getting it myself. I wrote it this morning. 
and I got it myself. When we have discernment and application of these things called wind and breath and the four winds, it becomes an incredibly powerful tool and weapon in spiritual warfare. I've never heard of such a thing. Wind is my new tool in my tool belt of stuff that I'm using to fight. And yes, we've all prophesied, and yes, we've all called those things that be not, and nothing happened. But I am declaring today, I am drawing the line. That was then, this is now. I'm not going to let disappointment, and I prayed, and nothing happened, stop me now. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hear God. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hear God. I am going to say that. I am going to hear God, and I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to go here. I'm going to go where he leads me. So when the four winds came together in Ezekiel 37, they came. These dead bodies and bones came to life again. And they engaged in some kind of spiritual force. And the Bible says that they became a great army. Don't be surprised at the army that God is going to have you lead. Don't be surprised. They may be dead or in a doornail right now. They may just be bones. But he's going to use you and the four winds and the things that you speak over their lives. And they're going to rattle again. Mm-hmm. Who said it's impossible? You, you declared the stuff on the video prophesy to the winds son of man and say to it live 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 here's what happens the four winds and really I'm I I don't really want to do a teaching on the wind but wind rearrange I'm talking about in the spirit realm it obviously happens it happened with Josh and Andy the wind rearranged things in the natural. Yeah, we understand that. I'm talking about the four winds of God that you is going to be coming out of your breath is going to rearrange things in the spirit. Four winds come to shake things up. So that why? So they can come in divine order. There is so much crazy out of order stuff going on. We're going to get a revelation of the four winds working together so that these things can be rearranged in the spirit. And when, Deanne Deanne had this revelation this morning, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, what came? A sound. As of a mighty rushing and I just, I just see it going like, like, this, like all four winds. They're going, this is it. And the angels came, and the four angels came. And if you listen to Tim Sheets, you know about the four corner angels. And I told Deanne, Catherine Watsi has been telling us about the four corner angels for years. And they've got the winds there. And that all showed up in that uh, upper Room and there appeared in them the tongues of fire, and it set on them, and they spoke in this new language. They spoke in tongues, and the Spirit gave them utterance. And Peter, who denied Jesus 50 days before, goes out and preaches some kind of message. I don't even know what he preached, and like 3,000 people get saved. Tell your neighbor, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Let the winds blow. I'm ready for that. So the winds carry the tongues of fire and filled the place so back to Ezekiel and God commanded and there is a command on us right now God commanded Ezekiel to prophesy to the wind tell it tell the wind I tell you I'm so excited about this and John, you, you started it at the table yesterday. Tell the wind. 
to enter those dead, dry bones in the valley. There has to be a spiritual wind initiated by a human being with the abilities of heaven to wake up the dead people. The wind is alive. The wind has an ability to hear. The wind has an ability to wake up. John, in the Bible. John 3. Let me get my. Truly, truly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, <clears throat> you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. <clears throat> you are born of the Spirit to carry the wind, to move. <clears throat> you may be the one that blows in the rain. You may be the one that blows in provision. You right. may be the one that blows the west wind because the wind is moving and you are moving with the Spirit. So everything that she's talking about in the Old Testament outside is now inside because we're living in the age of the outpouring of the Holy yeah, Spirit. Yeah, yeah. So we are, you're, we are full of the wind. Yeah. <laughs> and when the Holy Spirit tells us we open up our mouth and we release the appropriate wind and the appropriate place in the appropriate time. So say this, I am, I am the storehouse of heaven. Ah, oh, the storehouse of heaven. I got the wind. I got the wind. I've got the wind. Listen, I'm not going to beg God for change anymore. I'm not going to beg God to fix this stuff anymore. I got the wind. I got the wind. The four winds are going to take care of all of this. I'm just going to hear God like Ezekiel heard God. And nobody, nobody had ever heard that before. Nobody had ever spoke to dead bones before. You know what I'm saying. So you may hear something a little bit outrageous. Just go with it. Gone with the wind. You speak the power of God with authority because the wind is at home in your life. You can talk to the wind and the wind obeys you. Say that with me. The wind obeys me. The wind obeys me. Now listen. There are times, I thought about that, there are times to intercede. I'm not just saying now we've got this wind doctrine. There are times to intercede. There are times to cry out to God. There obviously are times to worship. There are times to study. There are times to listen to the prophets. There are times to wish, uh, listen to the uh, teachers. There's all of that going on. And then there are times for divine intervention with the wind. So that agents of God out of the fabric of creation would move. Those four corner angels are waiting on us to speak to the wind. So stand up and we're going to do that. Just going to do a little workshop here. Are you getting anything out of this? There are four winds heavenly host, angels dispatched to shift things. So we're going to work with the wind. Each wind, and you can do your own study, or you can have my notes for $25 a piece. <laughs> Just saying. We're going to work. Each wind has a purpose, just like I said. 
the north wind rain and the west wind that comes in and gets the locusts out and, and all the stuff. So, each wind carries a spiritual force. Now, remember, all of this is on the inside of us. We're not going out there and getting wind. The wind is in us. As Jesus is, so are we. Jesus spoke to that adverse wind. He knew what the death, he spoke the destiny. We're going over to the other side. I got some deliverance to do there on the other side. And an adverse wind came to stop them. And then he just says to the men, Where, where's your faith? It's just a matter of faith of all things. So we're going to, which way is north? That way is north, point to the north. Now, I'm going to say it, and then you can say it after me. We will command the north wind to bring forth rain. We will. We will command the north wind to bring forth rain. Physical rain. Physical rain. Refreshing from stress. Refreshing from stress. Refreshing from anxiety. You know that song, Let It Rain? It's not talking about water. It's talking about the presence of God. Also, when you speak to the north wind, you are speaking forth promotion. Promotion comes from the north. You've heard that? And so if we need a promotion, let us speak to the north wind. You understand what I'm saying? So get, get your fingers up and say this with me. Awake, O north wind. In the name of Jesus, I command you to do your assignment. Turn to the south. Point to the south. Say this with me. I command you, south wind, I command you, south wind to release and bring provision, to release and, bring provision. And, bring my desire. and bring my desire. I speak to you, south wind, I speak to you, south wind. and bring the power of God. Oh, wake, O south wind. Awake, o south wind. Blow, your Blow your power into my life. I command the south wind, command the south wind to, blow to blow poverty away. Okay, turn to the east and point to the east. That's this way. Say this. Awake, O east wind. Blow judgment, Blow judgment toward everything that is judging me. Bring judgment on altars of evil. Bring judgment to temples to false gods. Bring judgment to witchcraft. Bring judgment to anything that is weaponized against my destiny. Turn to the west. Awake, O west wind. In Jesus' name, I command restoration, deliverance, revival. Come for my help. Bring forth things that have been stolen. Awake, O oh west wind. Turn to me. Say this. Awake, four winds. Gone with the wind. The wind of God is in me. I will use the wind like a weapon of my warfare. I will be changed by the wind of God blowing in my life, blowing truth in, blowing discernment in, 
Growing health in. Growing finances in. Blowing the joy of the Lord in. In Jesus' name, give him praise. Hey.